Okay, so this is going to be a very quick video, or maybe a very long video, I'm not sure, but I'm going to wing it, and hopefully everything will go all right. So thank you for tuning in, and this is a bit of a follow-up video on my Frog Lube series. So somebody emailed me, um, which was actually quite flattering, that uh, considering how long and tedious those videos are, but apparently this emailer had seen my experiments and was wondering how things were going. So the bottom line is that experimentally I have no longer uh, decided to be using frog lube, but the question came up then, well, what are you using now? And what have you landed on in your search for sort of a safe cleaner for firearms? So. To get to that, I figured we'd cover a few things, but let's consider the history and a bit of the context. So we've got some options here, but let's start with the good old classic. So really, we started, I started cleaning with Hoppies number no. nine and the lubricating oil, just some basic oils. So these undoubtedly work. They're good old standbys, they work really well, and I would say they're sort of the the par or the standard by which we evaluate most of our other gun cleaning products these days. And in my experience, the Hoppy's non-synthetic bore cleaner is really quite good, but unfortunately it also has an MSDS sheet that would would scare the uh, scare just about anybody. So I were, began looking for alternatives for Hoppies Number Nine, partly because I'm just a total geek when it comes to process, and so thinking about what ingredients and what products I was going to use to clean my firearms, you know, the uh, the question of how to. Um, you know, how I was going to clean, what methods I was going to use. I geek out on that a lot, obviously. So with respect to that, I will say let's let's um, separate out Hoppy Synthetic from Hoppy's traditional bore cleaner. So when I got started, I picked up some Hoppy Synthetic. And I will say that I think between the Hoppy Synthetic and the non-synthetic, I definitely prefer the non-synthetic. For whatever reason, the synthetic seems to have a more negative effect on my airway passages and on, on my mental state uh, when I'm working with it compared to uh, the, the non-synthetic Hoppy's number no. 9 formula. And I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I seem to react better to the number 9. And so if I had lots of free space and lots of um, ventilation and everything was going my way, I could see people having no problem using number nine. Keep your hands clean, don't get exposed to it a lot, uh, keep yourself well ventilated, and you're probably going to be fine. And it's one of the best all-around cleaners, I think, and it has two major advantages. One is that it cleans and then really leaves a nice unobtrusive uh, finish on the firearm. So it's not too dry, but it's not too oily. And it, it really does a good job for keeping things clean. It is a very aggressive cleaner, but it's not so aggressive that you have to start worrying about overexposure to your standard bores or for other parts. So you can use it to clean the internals and metal parts and things like that. And for the most part, except for a few caveats, you're going to be pretty good. So overall, I think it's one of the nicest ones. It's aggressive, not too aggressive. It cleans well but it definitely is not a non-toxic cleaner. And so for me, you can see three of the cases of firearms that I have to consider. I also have to consider cleaning my ARX rifle, but the ARX rifle is so ridiculously easy to clean that I'm not going to even really bother talking about that specifically. I would put it in the same class as the APX um, in terms of what are the requirements for cleaning uh, between those two, two firearms. It's the, the ARX is just tremendously easy to clean. So to give a little backstory of where I went from here, 
I was looking for a type of non-toxic cleaner that would perform well, but would also help me uh, stay a little bit healthier. I wanted to re reduce the amount of exposure to toxic chemicals I was doing. I have, you know, if you have pets or if you have children or just if you have sensitivities to harsh chemicals, it can leave your skin dry, it can cause irritation of the lungs, it can cause, even under long-term exposure, it can cause mental uh, damage. So while it takes a whole lot to do that, I just preferred to reduce the overall exposure risk that I was presenting to myself and to those around me. And additionally, uh, the smell permeates quite a long time with many of the cleaners that are available. So if you're not careful, you, your carry gun can end up smelling like a gun. And that isn't really great if you're trying to operate in a environment where, oh, did I just use the word operate? Oh, that's horrible. Anyways, if you're trying to live and work and move around in, a, in an environment where people might be more sensitive to that smell, or you know you'd want to be a little bit deeper in your concealment or if you're in a little more formal environment then then having gasoline diesel smell on you is probably not the best way to go so that's a consideration as well so starting with the baseline evaluation hoppies 9 is a great cleaner and the hoppies 9 oil actually works really well people I like to think that there's some better stuff or some worse stuff, but as a baseline, the Hoppies Number no. 9 Lubricating Oil does a really great job. It's not too stinky. It doesn't smell too bad, but it also does a really good job of lubricating the gun uh, on the whole. And I tend to follow the philosophy of keep the gun clean rather than keep the gun wet. So I always prefer a cleaning and maintenance strategy that allows me to run the gun as dry as I can while still maintaining really good function. And that generally means that I care more about making sure I get a good clean than I care about overall lubricating properties for the gun. And the reason I do this is a lot of my guns I like to carry or they go into long-term storage where I don't want them leaking oil all over the place. So that that factors into how I'm evaluating all of this stuff. So these, these were good options, but you know, a couple of things that I have to consider is I want to be able to clean my PX4, my APX, and my Chiappa Rhino, and my ARX, and a number of other firearms. And I want to be able to do the same thing, more or less, with all of them. And so, to give you an idea of where you might run into some of these factors, if we go from left to right, the PX4 here, this is a traditional double action, single action gun. It's not modular in, in the P320 sense of the word. So what you have to consider is um, oil or grease or other things migrating down into the firing action. You have to consider that uh, doing a detailed strip of the slide requires punches and tools. And so you might not, uh, you, if you want to think about long term maintaining the gun for a while, you have to think about what is it going to take to detail clean it? What is it going to take to pull it apart? And for me, one of the big things is that I would not prefer to detail strip the px4 slide very often uh, i would still do it i have done it and it's a good thing to do but i would want a cleaning system that doesn't require me to detail strip extremely often the Kiapa rhino has wood grips um, it has a anodized aluminum with a finish it's got steel parts but it's a revolver so i want something that will work with the revolver and won't cause any problems and it's also extremely tedious to sort of break down into all its constituent constituent components components and it's not really a recommended thing and you can really mess up a revolver by playing around with the internals too much it's not a hard thing but it's a lot of work and it requires a lot more effort to get in there so if i'm using something that's going to gum up the internals that might be a problem the apx on the other hand is a breeze to maintain because it's modular it's very easy to get the chassis out and you can detail strip the slide very easily. So I can easily clean all of those components every time I, I come back from the range. So this leads to th basically three different levels of ease of breakdown in terms of cleaning the gun and really keeping it running fresh. So 
one of the things that I need is I need something that's going to allow me to get a good clean on all of these, but not cause problems if I um, that it's going to require me to detail strip the guns all the time, and also something that will let me clean well if I do detail strip. So I was using Frog Lube as a test because I wanted to see if what everybody was saying was true. Does it gum up the action? Does it cause problems in the gun? And in my con my conclusion is that basically it's inconclusive for me. I never had an issue with the firing pin channels or anything like that, but that's because I only used Frog Lube on a hammer fired action, which traditionally has a stronger striking force and can be more tolerant to gunk in the firing pin channel. Additionally, some of my only real repeatable malfunctions have occurred most often with Frog Lube on my PX4. So I can't tell whether that was due to the frog loop or something else. And the, the PX4 is a great test for that because of the rotating barrel action, which um, engages with the locking surface is slightly different. So it's, it's, it's a, an interesting way of seeing effects that might not manifest themselves in other firearms. So I used the frog loop on the ARX and the PX4. And my conclusion is basically that frog loop works and it works relatively well if you do it perfectly. And this is the big thing, is if you don't do frog loop perfectly, it's very easy to mess up. It's very easy to have too much applied or too little, and as the gun heats up, to lead to migration problems where you get frog loop in the channels and everything like that. And in my opinion, it's a very labor intensive. They sell it as a is a, a bio-friendly option that will reduce your cleaning time. But in my experience, frog lube just requires significantly more cleaning time to get a really properly clean gun. Um, if you're not as uh, picky, I guess might be a word, about how clean you want to keep your gun, then frog lube might work, but Frog lube does have a tendency to interact with the carbon compounds and the other stuff to form sludges that have to be removed on a regular basis or they can cause problems. It also does not interact well with any petroleum-based products. So if you get into a situation where petroleum products end up on the gun, you can easily get a sticky gummy substance out of it. Additionally, Frog loop has to be applied absolutely perfectly if you want to use it in cold weather. Otherwise, it can cause feeding problems. So overall, frog loop just did not do very well as a cleaner. The, the, the cleaning solution that they have was okay, but it wasn't particularly aggressive or fast. And you certainly didn't, for me, because of the way the frog loop works, I didn't have enough time to be cleaning my gun like that all the time. Um, it takes too much effort. And... In my opinion, really, to use frog loop well, you have to be constantly cleaning your gun. If you're not regularly cleaning out the old frog lube and putting in new frog lube, I don't think the gun is going to be reliable on the long run. Um, you, it, it needs that strip and reapply process going through multiple times in order to really provide resistance against long-term aging because it's a bio-based product that will gum up and cake up eventually over time due to interaction with contaminants and other things like that. So you have to, you do have to keep the gun clean. You do have to keep working with it. If you don't, you, you could end up in trouble. And if you're perfect about it, it'll probably still be pretty reliable, but if, but it's not tolerant of any deviation from the perfect basically. So, the benefit, of course, of frog lube is that it's one of the least dangerous products that you could possibly have. It's very mild. It's not at all hazardous in any sense of the word, basically, in any way. So I was a bit bummed that I couldn't really feel like I, I liked it, but I, I, the experiment went well enough to justify its use, in my opinion, if you know what you're getting yourself into. But that, you know, for me would mean... If I were going to use frog lube, I would only use it on a gun that I could detail strip readily and always that I was comfortable with maybe throwing into an ultrasonic cleaner and then re uh, treating properly after that. Um, something that I could really control 
how the lube migrated across everything because otherwise I might end up in trouble. So, you know, I, I would find myself cleaning out the firing pin channel on my APX regularly if I were uh, using frog lube. So what are some alternatives? Well, I know everybody loves to hate on fire clean, but fire clean also works very well. It's a vegetable based, you know, you can call it Crisco if you want it fine, but it does work. The product basically works as advertised. It behaves well. It lubricates the gun well. It cleans with the carbon well. It protects, does all of that. It's a good cleaner and it's a good, uh, it's a good overall CLP style product and it works. But my problem with fire clean is similar to the problem with frog lube is that both of these bio-based products have a tendency to degrade in ways that I don't like when they interact with foreign contaminants like dust and other things like this. <coughs> and I have seen, for instance, my bottle of fire clean get sticky because of the substance's uh, propensity to age, uh, as it were. And so fire clean also i liked I, I i gave it a good try uh it doesn't clean that well but it it does do a good job as an overall cleaning system if you will and so i can rec recommend fire clean if you're willing to constantly be on the lookout for keeping the firearm uh freshly lubed uh, and keeping that lube getting cycled through so that it doesn't age to a point where it gets gummy or sticky. And if you do that, I think the fire clean can work really well, but you got to be willing to keep that thing clean. And you have to have some way of stripping off all the old stuff eventually at, at, at certain cycles, in my opinion. And that's just me. That's just me being over, um, overly picky, I guess if you, you could say. So then where, where does that leave us? Well, it means that I don't really see the bio-based products as being ready for prime time, in my opinion, to meet my needs yet. And so I've gone looking for other stuff. So I, the what I have to do is once you've gone outside of the totally bio-based stuff, you've exceeded the range of completely, utterly non-toxic. You can eat the thing and you'll be fine. After that, it starts to get a little more iffy. And you have to start being willing to accept a slightly increased top level of toxicity, toxicity in order to um, get the performance that you're looking for. And so I have a few options that I think I can honestly recommend for general purpose use that would work for my case and works elsewhere. Uh, some of them are doing are better at some things than others. So let's start with what I would consider my bone stock, if I were recommending something to somebody on a general basis, this is what I would recommend go from there. And that would be the Breakthrough Clean Products. And this, I, I, I mean, these have been really heavily marketed uh, a few years ago. Um, and I said, all right, let's give them a try. I think you could call them overpriced and they are overpriced for what they are. You're paying a premium to get what you get out of these, but they work, they work well and they're convenient. So I can, I can recommend them or, or if you can find bulk cheaper versions of these, their exact formulation, I think that also works as well. So what, makes breakthrough clean useful in my opinion well they have the cleaner lube separation i find this to be a really nice general purpose approach is if you stick with a cleaner and a lubricant as separate products then you've got a cleaning phase where you clean your gun properly and then you have your your oiling and lubricating and you keep those separate i think that's a good way to work in general it it's nice um it keeps things similar to the Hoppies 9 approach, and I, I think it's a good general overall recommended approach. So additionally, the Breakthrough Clean is a fairly good aggressive cleaner, so it's fast acting, and it will 
do the job well without being overly harsh. And um, it's also relatively safe. So the, the oil as well is also probably a higher purity level than the Hoppy's number nine lubricating gun oil, Hoppy's nine oil. And so it, I've, I've been highly impressed with the Battleborn oil simply because it's just a pure ultra refined version of your mineral oil. And I like that it's a light gun oil. It works well across the board and it's really nice. I'm not sure I'm really a big fan of grease, but the breakthrough guys do have a grease that's what good as well. I think that grease is overrated. I prefer not to run grease on any of my guns. I think oil is plenty sufficient. I think this obsession with oil staying where it is, I don't think that's really necessary. I think that you use a light coat of oil, you don't need much of it, no worries. So what makes the battle uh, breakthrough clean solvent interesting is that it really, what it is, is it's a particular formulation of mineral spirits. That's it. It's just pure mineral spirits, but it is, so it's like a stoddard solvent, but what they've done with it is they've formulated it such that it has a very low evaporation rate. So it's not spewing fumes. It's, it's like, um, it's like a thick, low evaporation level version of, um, what do they call that? Odorless mineral spirits. And that's all it, it basically is. So you get a really good cleaner from this, but you get a cleaner that doesn't evaporate into the air quickly. And that makes it slightly safer to use than mineral spirits because it's less volatile as a product goes. And the uh, it's because it's not spewing odors all over the place, I think it's going to be less problematic for people who are sensitive to the odors in Hoppies 9 or the synthetic stuff or some of the other things. And these are two of the most odorless products you will find across the board. And that is one of their big benefits. They redu they have basically no odors, no colors that are going to bleach into your clothing or anything like that, and they are fairly non-toxic. You're still dealing with mineral spirits, so you you if you get it on your skin, it's going to strip the oil right out of your skin. It's not the most non-toxic product around, but on the whole, for overall health benefits, it's pretty good, and the oil is pretty good as well. I still feel that the you know, even though it's odorless and it's low evaporation, there is still fumes that are going to come out of your spirits, and those fumes can still affect you if you're in too enclosed of a space. So if you're in extremely tight um, spaces where you're really restrained and in terms of airflow and ventilation, then this may still not be enough for you. However, for most people, if it's just an open kitchen area with a little fan, that's going to be plenty to keep this running well for you. And it's simple to use. It, it works according to all the standard practices. So there's no special practice you have to get into in order to use this. On the other hand, unlike Hoppy's 9, Hoppy's 9 leaves a very small lubricating film. So you don't really have to oil anything after you use Hoppy's 9 solvent except for certain pieces so once it's dried off and cleaned off you're still got a pretty nice surface to work with and so if you're cleaning your internals for instance with hoppies 9 you can just dry them all off and let the hoppies 9 evaporate and you're good to go with the breakthrough clean i've noticed it really strips all the lubricating properties off and what you end up with is almost a a cakey uh, a very light dusting or cakiness of having this the, the the metal completely stripped and that means that you really do need to be able to apply oil uh, afterwards to get yourself back into shape so for instance if I'm detail cleaning the firing action on my px4 if I detail clean it with this solvent then I'm gonna have to go back and do a very very light oiling and really carefully make sure that I um, put all that uh, protected and everything back in a light form so that the action feels smooth again. Otherwise, I'll, um, it'll get cakey and you can get a gritty feeling in, in the action of your gun if that's how you use the cleaner. So that does incur an extra cost if you detail clean your gun like that. Um, 
However, if you're going to go through that much detail cleaning, you probably already are aware of that and you can manage it. And you can manage not over oiling your gun at that point as well. So overall, I consider this my number one standard pick if I'm going to pick something um, for somebody else. It's not what I'm currently using, however, because I still feel that it's a little too harsh for my tastes, um, just in terms of overall things. But it is one of my current favorites. So what other options have I tried? Well, one of the most unique options, I think, is this bad boy right here. And this is the Rogers Advanced Gun Cleaning Solution. And this, if you want to talk about an over-engineered cleaning solution, this is it right here. And the benefit of this system is that unlike most other products, which are more or less totally petroleum spirits uh, derived type products, this is more like buying a bucket of Tide detergent at the grocery machine or uh, at the grocery store. So this is a product that has three, uh, three main cleaning components and a lubricating oil. And the lubricating oil is a good oil. It's a little bit smelly, but it's got all the standard stuff that you want in a high performance oil. It looks like it has a little maybe a little Teflon or something else like that in there. And it's a, it's a good lubricating oil for making sure the gun, the action is going to work. But the, the main two key, basically secret ingredients in this are, it's got a, a really, really aggressive bore cleaner that you only use on the bore. So this would be something like your, your other copper solvents that are going to be extremely aggressive in the bore. And then you have a gel, Detergent is essentially a soap. It, it's literally a, a soap that's geared towards removing carbon and other things. And I can attest the when you combine it with the bore squeegee kit for cleaning uh, the gun, the, the stuff that comes in the Rogers bore squeegee cleaning kit system, you have a tremendously clean gun at the end of this. So what happens is that that gel that gets at it, when you get it at it with a brush, I've seen some places that otherwise would have had carbon residue still left over in little spots, just completely cleaned, completely stripped everything off. It really does work well, but it's not very aggressive to the skin. It's basically like a laundry detergent or a dish soap. So it's at the level of toxicity of a lot of other household chemicals. That's still pretty toxic. If you look at the level of toxicity that's in standard household cleaning products they're pretty high but they don't have an excessive smell it's not um not going to cause you any headaches i think unless you're extremely scent sensitive and uh, overall it's really really good at keeping the guns very clean the place where it fit uh it, it one of the unique areas where i think it's got some cons and pros is the third step which is this um gun cleaning rinse that they they use on it and the gun cleaning rinse is sort of another secret sauce i think in this thing because you can basically scrub your whole gun up rinse it off with water which i think is really an advantage here because you just take a bucket of water and you're it's like giving your gun a bath and by using this gun cleaning rinse you're able to reapply protection to the gun in a sort of spray bath way without having to re-oil the whole thing in your traditional manner. And what this does is this leaves a very fine lubricating film and it interacts with the water to avoid getting corrosion on the gun or creating problems. So it, it rinses the gun off and leaves this light, super thin, oily um, lubricant on it almost like a dry lubricant or something like that and i i think that's a really slick way of doing it because it allows you to keep most of the parts of the gun cleaned even though you might not have direct access to them you can really do a pretty good work with this and so that gives you some of the same advantages of the number nine in not having to detail oil every little piece once you've applied a solvent to it um, which is something the breakthrough clean doesn't have for instance but <laughs> there's a downside to this and i experienced this with one of my firearms is if you do the gun cleaning rinse 
you do need to make sure that the gun is dry, uh, dried off afterwards. And since I was using water instead of alcohol to do this, this rinse, what I found happen was if I got the water, the rinse, into a space where it was not able to fully evaporate due to the air, such as inside of a contained piston system or something like that, where there's exposed steel, but it's exposed in such a way where they can't, um, it can't get air and light to clean it out. What I found is that the water can still cause corrosion on the uh, on that piece of metal if the gun cleaning rinse doesn't have an opportunity to dry off. If the the, the rinse does have an opportunity to dry in any reasonable amount of time, say like half a day or something like that, then you're good to go, uh, no problems whatsoever. But if it can't dry and it just sits in there stewing over time, then I think I have encountered um, some surface level rust, which created, I, it's not a pitting problem, but it did create a bit of a, I, I could see rust forming on parts of the, the, the firearm that then I, I had to sort of use a little, not quite elbow grease, but I did have to be more aggressive to get that off of the gun afterwards. And that would be its con. I'm not saying that this using this cleaning kit is going to end up rusting your gun. It's not. Um, but you do need to make sure to allow for adequate ventilation in terms of drying the gun out after using the gun cleaning rinse to get the best results. So there, there's that. Now, I think one of the nice things that I experienced while working with this was using this boar squeegee uh, kit because the boar squeegee kit is a patchless cleaning system. And what it does is it allows you to use essentially a squeegee to uh, swab your bore or, or instead of using patches to clean out the bore. And that made it really fast to clean out the bore. When you combine it with a really aggressive bore cleaner like the copper solvent that's in the advanced gun cleaning solution, those two combined together work really well to get a nice clean bore. And the rest of the squeegee kit, it's a really good cleaning kit. And you can use this cleaning kit with other options as well, such as the Breakthrough Clean, and get good results. But I think the combination of the Advanced Gun Cleaning Solution and the, the Squeegee Kit work well together to get something that uh, lets you clean your guns really well. And the brushes and the extra sort of little details in the Squeegee Kit make it really nice. And, um, you know, I even broke a, broke a brush accidentally experimenting with some stuff with the Squeegee Kit and the uh um they were willing to send me a replacement for my troubles and i was i was very pleased uh with the level of customer service i received with that the the main pr uh brushes in the squeegee kit are nylon brushes or, or polymer brushes and so if you're using a cleaner that is not very aggressive that require that really needs the benefit of a brass brush a brass brush the this kit does include brass brushes, but I think it sees its best results when you're using cleaners that are aggressive enough that the polymer brushes work out just fine. Otherwise, um, it works, but you're going to have to be replacing the, the brass brushes more often. And I think the whole point of the squeegee kit, one of the, the things that I like about it is that you don't have to keep supplying an endless level of consumable products all the time. Um, so the, the use of the chemicals as your core cleaning product is kind of it's kind of nice now i will say i've tried some other cleaning alternative cleaning things like the the bore swabits and bore tips and some of these others and the bore tips work really well but i was not satisfied enough with the durability of the tips for me to consider them better than patches and I, I felt that they didn't clean reliably enough for me to feel good about it in terms of having an assurance that I have a clean bore the way I want or having the assurance that my gun is clean the way I, that I want it. Otherwise, they're very convenient, but the overall plasticity of the whole thing, it just didn't, it didn't sit as well with the way I like to work with them. However, I can recommend them if you're looking for something that to sort of minimize your cleaning kit, not have too much stuff around and not have a lot of throwaway trash, the bore tips will make that faster and improve that a little bit. Um, the 
but I think the squeegee kit is probably a little nicer to use if I'm being honest with myself. I, I like the pull through design. I really like how small the kit is and how it fits everywhere and how I don't feel you're really giving much up by having such a small kit. Whereas having a small kit that's for running patches through your bore, I've seen some of those. I think there's an Otis kit or something like that with some special patches that you use to do the pull through. I don't think that's as compelling to me in a small kit because the pull through cables take a long time to run if you're not using chemicals that are aggressive enough and, and running patches multiple times it just doesn't work as well for me. So the downside of this whole kit on a whole is that it is relatively complex to use. You have four steps. You've got your lubricating step, you've got your rinse, you have your overall gel cleaning, and then you've got your, your bore cleaning. And it's not complicated in in whole it's not like you're going to take a long time to clean and if i were cleaning a whole bunch of guns i could easily see how this would be a really fast nice way to clean um it it works really well and i actually can i could recommend this just as well if you if you're willing to if you want something that gives you a really clean gun but is really water-based rather than oil-based this is a really good way to do it because it they clean guns really well and at the end you've got a gun that feels good it doesn't stink it's um you know it's it's a slick slick piece so this is a good option i my hesitation with it personally for continuing to use it is simply that the chemicals are are pretty aggressive they're very harsh chemicals on the whole they're not really much worse than your your household cleaning products but even but i actually prefer to reduce the harshness in my standard household cleaning products as well so and um, they're a little harsher than what i prefer but they don't stink they're not going to smell and they're going to be relatively safe so as long as your dog isn't drinking the the soapy solution that you prepared afterwards or things like that and as long as you're not exposing yourself too much to the copper solvent you're going to be in good good shape but uh still not quite as as harmless quote unquote as i would go for and you know um honestly the the squeegee kit even though it worked really well there's something intangible about seeing a patch at the end that gave me a degree of confidence in my cleaning operation that is difficult to get from the squeegees which really is totally irrational because i bet the squeegees are cleaning as well or better than the patches are but it's a it's a it's a personal thing so yeah um easily recommend this but i felt like trying something else as well so now we get to this little guy now the rogers kit is something of a, a new school solution high-tech uh, all of our best modern engineering in um, solvents and detergents go into the Rogers kit. And the Breakthrough Clean is sort of the, the well-engineered traditional solution of a petroleum or mineral-based solvents and oils. Good, good way to go. Ballastol is old school. Ballastol is the... We don't even know about Stoddard solvents yet. We don't, uh, we don't know how diesel and gasoline work. We're, we need something. We need something that's going to clean, but we're going to use, you know, old school tech. And so, what makes Ballastol really interesting to me as a CLP is that most CLPs tend to emphasize the lubricating and pre preservation areas. And I've never found that to be really compelling because most firearms do not really need that much lubrication. They run really well with the basic level of lubrication and they're not, they don't require this really super crazy lubrication that people say they do. Uh, it's just not that bad. Um, guns are a lot tougher and um, require a lot less level of sophistication in terms of lubrication than people think, I, I, I have found. And as far as preservation goes, most guns have really good coatings on them. They're not subject to rust in most environments, and 
the environments where they are subject to rust, you've got to do some pretty crazy stuff anyways to ensure that they uh, stay rust free. It's not just, oh, change your lube and you're going to be fine. You know, you need to be doing a lot of extra stuff if you want to maintain your your firearms inside of a marine saltwater, you know, daily carry out on the salt sprays of the ocean kind of lobster rig thing that you're going for. And if that's the case, you, you're you going to have to do a lot more than just pick an oil to protect your guns. So um, that also, to me, is less compelling. For the most part, a good light coating of oil is going to be all that anybody needs for their daily carry to be preserved from rain and rust and all of that. And if you need something more, uh, find find out whatever works for your body type. If you've got a lot of sweat that's getting on the slide causing problems, maybe you need to use a little more oil or you need to use an oil that neutralizes that better, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, for long-term storage, maybe you need to accept the fact that in order to store the firearm, you're going to have to use more oil coated on there and let it cake up to preserve the gun and it won't be ready to go. Uh, you know, some people have this dream of, of a firearm that once you put it in the safe, it should be lubed, totally protected, and then I should be able to pull it out five years later and it should be ready to go out of the box. And I just don't think that's a reasonable expectation um, from any lubricant because the, you're, you're asking for a set of factors that I think causes people to emphasize the lube and protect side without the clean. And so as a CLP, the, I actually think that the emphasis should be on the C side, the cleaning side, uh, because that's the real thing that you want to use the CLP for to keep your gun clean, and then it needs to be able to lubricate adequately and protect adequately. Most of the CLPs don't clean very well, though. That's what I found. Uh, most of them are essentially an oil that relies on brush action to lift uh, deposits out, and it doesn't do a lot to attack traditional deposits like... Um, copper or the other stuff and what is interesting about ballistol is that ballistol is an old school clp that really does emphasize the c part it's a really really good cleaner it's a penetrating oil it is a very very mild copper solvent and a very 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 mild lead remover very small um trace trace amounts but it but it um it does in fact attack copper but it attacks it very slowly it does a really bang up job on attacking carbon and it's also possibly one of the most if not the most ec ecologically friendly of the oils around there without going towards the bio-based products which is really interesting the composition of ballastol is essentially a medicinal grade mineral oil like a baby oil type product combined with a set of vegetable alcohols emulsifiers and other um, natural products that form form this uh this anise smelling uh clp and the big disadvantage of it is that people sometimes really hate that licorice anise smell and uh, it drives them crazy. But, uh, oh, and another disadvantage is that it is a CLP. So you're getting the, you're, you're not getting the separate solvent and the, the separate oil. But that can actually be a plus as well. So ballastol, I found, does a really good job cleaning. It does a pretty good job lubricating and it does a pretty good job uh, protecting. So it's a good CLP all around. But it's also tremendously safe. The LD50 levels on these things are basically i think one of the versions said we filled the rats to the brim after they felt a little discomfort and passed all the ballast all out no negative uh effects were noted so in essence ballastol is one of the safest cleaners out there um and it what you're trading off in getting such a safe cleaner is it is a fairly slow acting cleaner and so that's that's a bit of a disadvantage, uh, but it's very safe. It it's it's an antiseptic, so you can use this as a field first aid thing, provided that you haven't contaminated your bottle of oil with with other stuff. Um, it's you know it's skin safe. 
Uh, it's eco-friendly. It doesn't have any carcinogens in it. This is basically as close as you can get to a really safe product out there. And it, you know, unlike all the other products, all the other products I've listed so far, they're not really good for your skin. You can't get your skin covered in the other products and really expect a good result. Whereas Ballastol, you could actually expect for it to moisturize your skin, clean it up, and uh, feel good. So it's a, it's a lotion. It's, a, it's one of these um, products that gets a lot of hype because people want to make it a miracle cure for everything. And it does an adequate job at a lot of good stuff, um, which it makes it, for me, it's, it's what you might wish WD-40 was. It, it works in most of the places where it, people might have traditionally used WD-40, but then it also works to protect leather and clean and all that other stuff. And it works really well as a gun oil. And so the, the thing that I find <laughs> interesting about Ballastol is how you can use it as a cleaner and leverage the fact that it's a CLP to sort of make up for some of its deficiencies. And so yeah, I've mentioned before that I kind of like the solvent and a separate solvent and cleaner approach uh, from the oil. And the disadvantage of this two separate products approach is that to get a really good solvent in that approach, you have to have an aggressive cleaner. Because if you don't have an aggressive cleaner, it won't clean quickly enough for you to then re-oil the gun and reassemble it. However, if you've got a slow acting cleaner like Ballastol, what you can do <laughs> is you can actually use Ballastol and let that continue to clean the firearm while it's assembled. And so what I will do sometimes if I use Ballastol is I will clean the gun up, give that light coating, maybe give it a light coating to the bore, and let that oil continue to work while the gun is assembled. And you can't do that with a non-CLP product. However, you can do that with a CLP product because it's also a lubricant and a protector. So it's a gun oil, but it's actually continuing to clean slowly, but it is continuing to clean the firearm as the product stays on and while you're carrying it around still. And that allows you to then take advantage of the fact that it's a slow copper solvent and other things like that without having to have the aggressive solvent. So I can leave it in the bore for a day or two or three, and then I can take the gun back out and give it a good wipe down and clean down and a mild light re-oiling. And the gun will have had a deep clean applied to it because the ballastol will continue to clean the gun without having to use any really, really harsh chemicals. The disadvantage of an approach like that is that I need to apply. Um, I need to basically clean the guns twice, clean them well enough to be reassembled, and then I need to clean them again to get all the extra stuff that the ballastol had to work on for a while, whereas a more aggressive cleaner might have taken all of the necessary things out in the first cleaning. The advantage is that I can use a very, very, very mild product to do that cleaning now instead. So I, among all the things, Ballastol, the smell doesn't bother me in the least. And because all of the smells are derived by very natural products that are relatively mild, it doesn't give me headaches or any problem because of a synthetic scent or a synthetic uh, element. It doesn't dry the skin out. It cleans my firearms really well. It lubricates them really well. It serves as the protector. Um, it doesn't interact negatively with my leather holsters and uh, so on. So I actually find Ballastol to be my number one pick right now for me in terms of a, the safest bio-friendly um, product for for cleaning firearms and that would be my normal pick um, the other ones just I feel are still a little too toxic for me um, but you know I do have to change my cleaning regime around a little bit to get the level of clean that I want from Ballastol uh, so keep that in mind is it's a great great cleaner but sometimes it it's worthwhile to let your gun soak a little bit to clean uh, in order to get the most clean with Ballastol. I also would say I do not recommend the aerosol version of Ballastol because it loses its total non-toxicity properties because of the carrier they're using to uh, the propellant they use in the aerosol. 
And so instead, I go just straight with the oil version, and I find that to be significantly better. And I liked the Roger Squeegee kit so much that I couldn't help but want to create my own little cleaning kit that was about the same size, but worked more for the way I work with cleaning my firearms with the ballistol. So what that means is I've got a couple of these Dewey cleaning rods for the rifle and the pistol. And then I put together my own little cleaning kit, which contains a rag, contains Q-tips, it contains punches, um, patches, and it contains brass brushes, jags, and swabs to go onto the Dewey rods, which I then use to clean the my firearms. And so I find that I still like the jag and um, brush approach better than the other stuff, simply because the the brushes just seem to work and I like the way the jags um, get a really tight seal with the cotton patches and all of that I just find them to work really well and I I find that the bore squeegee kit works really well if you're using those aggressive cleaners but the bore squeegee will totally remove um, enough of the uh, ballastol uh, that uh, it's just uh, it's just not as convenient I think to keep it clean. I can't see as much of the grime coming out as I can see on a patch and so even though the squeegee probably strips the the excess stuff better than the, the patches do, the patches just give me a bit more satisfaction in the cleaning process and since it's not that big of a deal one way or the other I like the satisfaction of having the patches um, in terms of the cleaning. And the patches also double as the um, way of doing a detailed clean with an oily cleaner like Ballastol because um, I'm not going to be doing a, a rinse like I am with the Rogers kit. So the Boar Squeegee kit, in my opinion, to really uh, leverage or, or use it better, I would need to add things like rags and Q-tips and other patches anyways simply to do my detailed cleaning for the other parts of the gun. And so if I'm going to have my patches anyway to do all of that, why not just have the patches for the barrel as well? So uh, the bore. So, you know, um, I, I liked the idea of the squeegee kit, and I, I still think it's a really nice kit. But for the way that I work with and clean my guns, I, I have a lot of rags and patches and things like that that I like to use. So um, that last bit is just because, you know, some people have asked me how I... Uh, work with my cleaning stuff. I do like to have the metal brass brushes. I really like the super aggressive brass brushes from Brownells, the, the extra tough ones, because um, I only have to put a few pushes through to get a good clean out of those. I like the, the brass jags rather than the plastic ones. I don't like to use the plastic uh, patch loops. If I can avoid them, I like to use my brass jags. And the Dewey rods are just really good, so I like I like those rods. Anyways, there's my uh, summary of everything, and I know that I said it would be a short video. I feel like an hour is plenty short to discover, to discuss all of this crazy, interesting, geeky stuff that we can do when it comes to oils. The bottom line is just about everything works really well. Um, you know, for example, I even gave this, uh, this little uh, Hoppies Elite gun oil a try. Works really well, uh, but... You know, it's a little more smelly than the standard lubricating gun oil. And as I said before, I don't really like the smell. So, you know, all of these products primarily work really well. So the question to me is not really do they work, but it's a matter of what trade-offs are you making in terms of your usability and your quality of life when you're working with them. And each of them has a different set of things that they've optimized. So some things are just going to be easier with one than the other. And they're all going to get your gun clean. You're going to be able to get a reliable firearm out of them if you do it right with each one of them. But you just have to make sure that you pick the ones that are that are going to be most convenient or most uh, enjoyable for you to use. Because if you enjoy doing it, then you're going to keep your guns clean, which will be good for them. So uh, right now, I find myself 
when it's my choice to clean the guns, I find the ballastol seems to travel best for me because I'm traveling a lot and I can easily take the ballastol and the patches and everything and set up just about anywhere, clean the guns, uh, get them working. I It's a minimalist thing that I don't have to carry around a lot of products. You know, I don't have to carry around a lot of sprays or rinses. I don't have to set up a lot to, to get everything clean and used. Uh, and it's such a mild product that I can use it just about anywhere without any problems. And so I, right now I've become a bit of a Ballastol fan. Uh, as much as that's a, I think Ballastol is a bit of uh, overhyped in some sense because people just fall in love with the thing. And, you know, there are a lot of things that will do a lot of things better than Ballastol. Um, there are better cleaners. I've showed some of them today. There are better lubricants. There are better um, protective oils. But the Ballastol does it all well in a package that is extremely bio-friendly. And I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a more bio-friendly, eco-friendly, human-safe product that does as good a job as Ballastol does and makes it as convenient as it does. So that's where I'm at with things. Um, sorry for the long video, but I can't help myself sometimes. The uh, So in the end, I would not recommend Frog Lube or Fire Clean for your average shooter. I can recommend Breakthrough Clean as a really good standard solution. That would probably be my number one pick for most people. For people who are uh really interested in cleaning the firearms but they don't want you know the oily stuff they and they really like being able to get a good deep clean or they like the idea of a water-based solution as something a little more gentle than the the petroleum-based solutions then the rogers kit uh, rogers advanced gun cleaning solution and the boar squeegee kit are superb i really like those and if you're just absolutely in love with the idea of a truly utterly non-toxic as bio-friendly as you can get kind of product and you're willing to um, <clears throat> maybe make some sacrifices in order to get that then ballastol is just a a really great way to go um, but you know it's not going to clean your bore as fast as will the rogers kit it's not going to uh you know it's a clp so it's an oily cleaner it's not going to have that separated solvent and lubricant uh it's not going to be as lubricating or as protecting as some of the other options might be but it's going to be more than adequate in my opinion for most people's needs it does a good job it's a good functional product but um you know there it is so i'm i'm currently in the ballastol camp but uh you know make uh make your own evaluations and see what you think good luck and have fun.